Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin, and I'm joined by my personal falafel bay, Rich Stambolian. Yeah, baby, what's going on? Where do you get your falafel from? Uh, I get it from the uh, halal guy down the block. Yeah? Yeah, just, some, uh, just, just a very clean guy. He makes it himself? He makes it himself. Lives in a house, just makes it with his hands all day long, just mushing up <laughs> falafel. And he just hands it to you. Them, yeah. Mushing up them garbanzos? Yeah, garbanzo beans. Uh, Rich, we had a very long weekend. Uh, we did uh, multiple nights of WrestleMania coverage. I did Saturday with MG Geek and a whole bunch of callers. Shin called in. A bunch of other people called in. I got to tell you, though. Mm -hmm. Saturday night was crazy. But Sunday night, off the rails. Sunday night was bonkers. Sunday night heat. Sunday night was bonkers. I I believe we got hundreds of dollars of donations uh, of we funds did. throughout the show. Super chat. People were funding us the entire show. Uh, we made new friends. Jonathan Risk in our chat room created the greatest photoshops. Uh, Green Lives Matter. Unbelievable photoshops. Suncast. Unbelievable photoshops. The entire night. Uh, I, I did want to say... Uh, I want to give a big thank you to everybody that joined us, participated in the chat, made the show unbelievable. You guys that really, uh, I, you know, there's a, there's, there are few moments in doing this that I've been doing for 10 years that I have a loss for words. This was one of them. Uh, genuinely, deeply appreciate all of you. Uh, and you guys made a pretty lackluster build for an event into something that I, I don't think we could have had more fun doing. It was so much fun. Uh, I enjoyed uh, a lot of it, uh, even though I was dipping in and out. Um, it was it was a good time. And again, thank you guys for everything and staying and tuning in every every day. I know there's really not much else to do, but you know we're we're here for you. Yeah, I I, I have to tell you, it was it was great. I I generally appreciate it. Also, we we are going to do another show on Thursday. Uh, what we're going to do on Thursday is uh, we're going to have I'm setting it up with youtube right now to create donations to go to a charity we're hoping that the charity is going to be for um first responders and of course people working uh in the medical field uh we're going to be taking funds for that while we do a live show maybe we could do something fun with it maybe we'll do it later on in the afternoon we could have a couple of drinks while we do it uh, i'm working on it i i'm not there's no guarantee that i'm going to be able to get it up and running this thursday but rich and i will do a show this thursday Regardless, yes. I, I, right now I have to get YouTube to okay it, and, and, and I, I sent them the email yesterday. I'm waiting for it to go through. But Thursday, we're going to do it. Also, uh, did you see the video of Anshante in WWE 2K20? Yes, I did. Uh, I couldn't stop. Everything you sent me directly yesterday, I could not stop laughing at. I, it was just um, phenomenal. Everybody did such an amazing job with these photoshops. I was completely blown away by every single one of them. My favorite one though is the uh, is the autograph or the one you sent me like at seven thirty in the morning yesterday, which is the uh, the standard on China's hey picture and just a blurred out uh, piece of deal. Yeah, the piece of deal's blurred out, which I I haven't posted <laughs> that one. That'll be that'll be for like another big pay per view. I'm gonna hang on to that and we'll you know when we hit big funds, I'll I'll post that. That that one that one is a little invasive. Uh, so, I was it. so Suncast made that one, and I was staring at it. I'm like, oh my god, did this guy find one of my pictures and post it? He's like, I was like, and I wrote to him. I'm like, is that my peach? And he goes, why wouldn't it be? It, it's not. I had to. I had to do a long examine mm -hmm. of it <laughs> to make sure it's not mine. This is a, but, a lot of uh, Anshante Wang action happening. Anshante is taking over it's, again. It's amazing. He's mm -hmm. back. He's he's back into the mix. Uh, but I, this is a show about professional wrestling. Guys, um, WrestleMania weekend's gone. We got through it. Two-night event. Rich, if you have the card on hand, let's just go through it very quickly because we've spoken about it uh, to to no ex I mean, for the last three, four shows, we've been talking about WrestleMania. I want to go through the card very quickly. Rich will do a rundown. And then we'll talk about the aftermath of what's to come because it is a lot of uncertainty. The The... The WrestleMania plan that they had currently is the post WrestleMania plan is almost out the window. Everything is going to be different. Right. So, yeah. Uh, Rich, do you have the card in front of you? I do have the card. Okay, let's we run right, down the so, card quickly. 
Let's do it real quick. So you had a uh, night one first match was Cesaro versus Gulak in four minutes, which was a nice, quick wrestling match. You know, like they went at it. Uh, those guys know what they're doing. And uh, I think Cesaro won, right? Yeah, Cesaro won. Uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, Nikki Cross beat the Kabuki Warriors for the uh, championship. 15-minute match. It was, it was fine. Okay. You know, uh, 15 minutes. beat... Elias beat King Corbin in a nine-minute match, which was also fine. You know, I feel like that match would have been better in front of an audience. I feel like that's, that's what we should that's what we should do with these, where it's like I know a lot of this stuff held up like without an audience, but some like a match like this definitely needs an audience because it's like two big dudes, right? I, I, to go back to the Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss match, I thought it was a very mm-hmm. good match. Yes, but uh, you're right it, it again in match. front of an audience, way better. Uh, Becky Lynch beat Shayna Baszler. I I honestly like again not to knock the two women in the match, but I felt like this was a weird letdown. Yeah, uh, it right. was a weird let. Well, for a number of reasons, right? First of all, they couldn't do yeah. the proper build. They couldn't build this properly. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people, uh, even though NXT is mainstream and it's there, a lot of people are not exposed to Shayna Baszler. They didn't really realize what she was. The the only right. memory people have of her is her biting somebody. Exactly. And Everything also, kind of fell I, apart after that. Ex- yeah, that, that for some reason, it just kind of fell flat. And I, I said this the other day, I don't think they have good chemistry with each other. It's, you know, and, and I, I don't know why it just doesn't come across like that on screen. It comes across like a little janky. I agree and, with you. And, right? Um, yeah. All right. Then moving on, we had uh, Sami Zayn beats Daniel Bryan to retain the IC belt. Uh, fun match, nine minutes. Uh, I did like Sammy. This was one of those matches that it was okay that there was no crowd because everybody involved is that entertaining, right? Uh, I I thought they did a great job. And obviously mm-hmm. the cast, like you said, uh, did great around that. But I just think about that this was the generico Daniel Brian Danielson match. You know what I mean? Right. If you really yeah. think about uh, who these people are and where they came from, and this was their match. I thought it was a good match. I I don't think they could have done anything more with no crowd. You know, it's it's it was the other problem is, and and Dave Meltzer mentioned this. You know, if you looked at this match, a uh, part of the issue. I mean, it was a good match, but part of the mm-hmm. issue was that Sammy is a manager, right? And he kind of wrestled like a manager, right? He didn't Listen. wrestle like a top top tier, you know, wrestler. He was he was kind of like a manager. I thought it was interesting that they kind of put that element into it. He's uh, one of those guys that could adapt to any situation, and he went from having like a pretty pretty decent like quote unquote high risk style to you know that WWE style, and then working smarter. So now I you know like I'm glad the guy's prolonging his career that he's working that kind of managerial slower style where he's not taking as many bumps he's not taking as many risks i'm fine with that you know i want to see that dude around for a very long time yeah me too um john morrison beat jimmy uso and kofi kingston in a triple threat ladder match for the wwe tag team championship 18 minute match uh i thought it was fun this this had the potential to steal the show and i also kind of felt bad for them where it's like yo really we got we still got to do the ladder match (laughs) Dude, these guys worked their asses off. If this was in mm-hmm. front of a crowd, this would have been probably the match of night. They really, uh, every one of these guys worked super hard. You're Like you said, they took crazy bumps, working a freaking ladder in front of nobody. Think about, yeah. the, you know, these guys, they didn't have to do this. You know what no, I mean? No, not at all. They, they could have just done a standard house show match, TV match, but they wanted to give you something that they're proud of and give you something that you're going to say, oh, my God, look at these guys. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this match. It, it was a lot of fun, and the ending was good, too. Like, it, it, you ended up getting, like, vested into it, and you know there's going to be more to come. I think the addition of throwing Morrison and Miz into the tag team scene is a good call because it is, like, for the last four years, it's just been the Usos and the New Day, right? And then um, Cesaro the bar. Right. Yeah. Um, so now you have like a new uh, like a new team that's that's starting there, which is kind of cool. Uh, Kevin Owens beat Seth Rollins in an ODQ match, seventeen minutes. Um, that was fun. Good ending. Nice bump off the uh, off the sign. Another great match. 
another really good yeah. match. Uh, I, I'm I'm curious what their big spot would have been if uh, they were in the building. You know, if they were in, in mm. Tampa for WrestleMania, this was the this was the Shane McMahon spot. This was always going to be that match that had that big spot. Uh, right. I thought Seth Rollins coming out as as essentially Jesus was mm -hmm. uh, really the entrance would have been awesome. That's that's something that we really lacked is the really cool entrances. I hope they do something really big with SummerSlam. Um, yes. You know, they're in a big I think they're in Boston for SummerSlam. So are they? Are they mm -hmm. in Boston? I think they are. In I'm Boston. not 100% sure. So they could do something with this. I it just what a shame we got to miss that. But these guys put on a hell of a show. Oh, they did. Uh, and now your favorite match, seconds. your favorite match of the night is next. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, your favorite match of the night is next. What Braun Strowman beating? Goldberg? Yes, yeah. In two minutes for the uh, for the Universal Championship, two minutes and ten seconds. There was That's four fine. moves. I think there was four or five moves. Yeah, good for. Uh, we talked about this. Uh, I think Sunday, where I am like, all right, he's the uh, he's the no crowd champion, and I'm fine with that. You know, and that that this was supposed to be a, tra a transition to get that title back on Roman, right? Yes, this was this was for him to get the title and to continue and then have, you know, him being the champion of SmackDown. You know, it was yeah. intended to be somewhat of a long term until they built a heel or they built somebody big to kind of take the title off of them. Uh, this right. kind of fell apart. Obviously, we're probably now going to get Roman and Braun at mm -hmm. whatever the next big event is to take the title off of them and put it on roman i would do it at SummerSlam more than anything else uh i again listen by the way they were doing ads for money in the bank they were which is for next which is month cool. gave everybody a little bit of hope right gave everybody a little bit of hope uh they i i, I believe it's now public that they got okay to film in florida next week oh wow that's cool. or this week without a they're, crowd without a crowd they're, they're filming they're like they're they're they got the okay to put on the show. The wheels are turning. Um, so another one was there are buildings that they could do. I believe Nebraska and uh, North or South Dakota, I couldn't remember, was another Ooh. area that they were going to be allowed to film. They want to stay in Florida. Think about it. All their equipment's there. Yeah. The ta majority of their talent's there in the Tampa area. So it's not that difficult that to get true. from Tampa to uh, you know Orlando. So they want to be in Florida. Um, I I... I'm surprised they got the okay, but I guess it. I guess that phone call with Trump could have played a part. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, they maybe they realize that you know these guys are doing all the proper steps to ensure that people are healthy and they're safe and they're sending people home if they're sick. So you know mm -hmm. if they're running on a skeleton crew and they're able to produce these shows and the talent is willing to work. Uh, you know why not? Or Vince could buy his own island like Dana White. Dana freaking White. Uh, for people who don't follow UFC, they're doing a show in 12 days on a mm. remote island. Now, what island are they on? It's got to be something off the Florida Keys, right? Uh, Monday Night Mar-a-Lago would be a great show. <laughs> Mike Awesome <laughs> in our chat room. Uh, yeah, is it is it off the Keys? Is it in the States? I don't think it's in the States. It's probably I don't have in the details international on waters, right? But this dude's doing his own uh, Mortal Kombat tournament, basically. And yes. listen, if Dana, if Dana White could do it, I think Vince could buy a small island and just call it, like, Wrestle Island. But why not? You know what, though? <laughs> I'm sure that Vince would get in touch with Dana and be like, hey, Dana, can we use this island? Can we use your island? Okay, here we go. Dana White says, I'm a day or two away from securing a private island, he told TMZ. I have a private island that's secured. We're getting the infrastructure put in place. So I'm gonna start doing the start gonna start doing international fights too with international mm. fighters because I won't be able to get international fighters into the U.S. I have a private island and I'm gonna start flying them in all around to do international flights. The first fight is gonna be April 18th. How crazy is that? Nuts. This is like this is like um, End of the Dragon. Yeah. This uh, is right. uh, make it cool, do dude. Make it make them fight on sand. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Like yeah. Street Fighter, basically, Street like Fighter. every 
every Street Fighter background could be done. Um, and you could do that with WWE too. I'm sure there's going to be a phone call happening. Anyway, um, last match of the first night of WrestleMania. Really enjoyed how both nights were like a pretty tight three hours. But we got something that I had zero expectations for. Undertaker beating AJ Styles in a Boneyard match. Okay. 19 1 minutes. to 10. 1 to 10. I thought this was a 10. I watched it again with my wife. Um, okay. My, so just didn't see it. But I, I, I wanted her to watch that in the Firefly Funhouse, which we'll talk about. I oh, wanted to get God, her yes. opinion as a non-fan. She's not a wrestling fan. Mm. She tolerates it if it's on. But it's not her thing. She thought it was done really well. She's like, it was shot like an 80s movie. Mm-hmm. It was it was just, you know, a B-list movie, which was exactly what it was intended on being. I thought it was great. I want to yeah. know what you what you got. You finally got American Badass after all these got years. American Badass. <laughs> you got American Badass. This was the moment. You were super happy mm-hmm. with it. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, no, I, I think we mentioned this on Sunday night too. We're like, uh, one of the one of the cool, really cool things about it was it was shot very well. And not only that, but these guys didn't really take bumps specifically. No, they took yeah. moves. You know? So I don't know if you read about the production of this. Uh, I I I believe Jeremy Borash was involved, but it was generally it was Hunter and it was Michael Hayes that were uh, running the show here. They started mm-hmm. filming at 9 p.m. and it went all the way to 5 a.m. So think about how, it, it was an eight hour shoot. Think about how long these guys were working. Undertaker was out there with AJ Styles till five in the morning filming this, uh, which w- great, right? Amazing, unbelievable. Uh, Pretty the cool. dedication, the dedication, you know, I, I, I can't, nobody could talk shit about Taker and the dedication he has and the love he has for this business. This guy did not have to do this till 5 a.m. AJ didn't have to do this till 5 a.m. They were all very creative. Uh, a lot of the dialogue was ad-libbed. They were doing yeah. it on the fly and Hunter was encouraging more talking. So all the talking was, uh, there was no script for it. They were just, they were doing the talking on their own. Um, also, it took them about a week to clean the, the place up. But how much fun was that? Wasn't that one of the most fun things you've seen in a very long time? Very long time. And, and I want them to do this with Taker way more. You know, this, this, Absolutely. you could continue. You extended this man's career and the mystique and, and seeing these matches for another five years at least. Mm. Did you watch the preview to the last ride docuseries on him? I didn't. So, did you watch the one after? The Drew Gall- the Drew McIntyre one? No, Undertaker had the- one night one. After the, the show, preview. it was is what what it was it a preview? Was that what it was? Yeah, it was a thirteen minute preview for a docu series, and it was a lot of fun. And it kind of puts you like right into the heart of the character, where he was like, "Well, my job every year has been to wrestle at WrestleMania, and then I get banged up at the match." And I need a surgery to fix it. And then I recover and I'm ready for next year's WrestleMania. And he's like, that's been the cycle for like the last few years. But it's interesting to see him just wearing like a baseball hat yeah. and talking. Or like uh, he was wearing like a bucket hat at the beginning, which I just thought was like a little silly, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. This is my own thing. Uh, yeah. It was great, man. Night one. What did you think of night one overall? Okay. So night one had some really good... Uh... Mm-hmm. They had some really good matches. So I'm going to look at the card again. Sorry, I closed it out here. Yeah, that's fine. So that's fine. I would say that the Boneyard match was my favorite. Uh, yes. The favorite favorite event, right? The favorite match, but not not like a wrestling match. Uh, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins was a, another great match. Sami Zayn and Daniel mm-hmm. Bryan was good for what it was. I enjoyed that match. And I think the star of the night would have been John Morrison, Jimmy Uso, and Kofi Kingston as far as a, yeah. a WrestleMania big match. Um, I, I, yeah. you know, obviously Braun and, and Goldberg was nothing. That was a dud. So I would say one, two, three, four, four matches. I really liked and the rest were, eh. Okay. So what was that? Like a B minus? I would say a B, B minus. Yeah. B minus. Give it a B minus. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in there. I'm in there with it. It was, it was more fun than I thought it would be. It also, we talked about this on Sunday. If they just do this for WrestleMania every year and split it into two nights, it's so much more palpable and consumable than having an eight hour thing where by that you don't care by the end of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, night two, uh, Liv Morgan beat Natalia. 
in a singles match. So okay, I gotta tell you, gave them am, I the only, yeah. am I the one that loved this match? I thought I thought they both looked great. good in this match. It was great. It was great. You can't really go wrong with Natalia. Natalia is she's such a good worker that she'll make everybody look like like a big deal. Yeah, I I really like this match. Um, next match, twenty minutes, twenty minutes, thirty seconds. Charlotte Flair beat Rhea Ripley by submission. To to get the NXT Women's Championship, yes, um, great match. Both of them are so fantastic. Fantastic. And, you know, it's what's funny is that online people were complaining about how much they were moaning <laughs> during the uh, well, they, during I the match. It. Yeah, uh, I thought it's an, I thought they arena. both looked great. Uh, also, I don't know if people realized Rhea Ripley was dressed up as Vegeta. Was that was that what it was supposed to be? That is what it was. She was Vegeta. Okay. Which That's is cool. very cool. Uh I, I thought she looked great. Uh mm -hmm. she felt like a big star. Charlotte winning the title. Obviously, it's to continue the feud on NXT TV. Mm -hmm. I, I understand the purpose. Charlotte is now a thirteen time world champion. Uh in murky in a, numbers. Murky numbers, thirteen time world champion. Yeah. I I, I, I thought they both did great. I thought the quality of the match was up there. Uh, mm -hmm. Started off... I, I enjoyed it. Listen, I thought it was very good. By the way, back to Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan is getting uh, MG Geek in our chat room. A very slow build, which I like. They're taking their time yeah. with her. Take your time. They're also, they also did a good job of kind of resetting the nonsense they gave her with Lana. Yes. Right, yeah. so like they, somebody believes in her. She's still super young too. Like she's one of the. I think she's like not even like twenty five, right? Uh, I think she's in her twenties. Okay. Um. So we had that, and then we had Alistair Black beating Bobby Lashley seven minutes. I think the highlight of that for me was Alistair Black's um entrance attire. Yeah, very cool. It was a WWE two K twenty style outfit. Um, yeah. <laughs> also. Uh, Bobby Lashley with pants. Do you like it or not? I thought he just looked weird. <laughs> you know, like it, maybe he's been skipping leg day for the last few. Do weeks. you think? Do you think he has a a a a even one follicle of hair on that man's body? No, not at all. Smooth. Smoothest butt in town. Smooth, totally smooth. I think he should wrestle in a full body suit. Okay. <laughs> like a like a mocap, like a mocap like, man. Yeah, kind of yeah. Perfect. Uh, we had, uh, and that was fun. You know, it was a fun match, seven, quick seven minute match. Otis beating Dolph Ziggler with Sony Deville. You had the twist that, you know, Otis finds out that it's Sonya and Dolph conspiring to keep him and Mandy apart. And you yeah. got your little WrestleMania moment with the, uh, with the kiss at the end there. The big kiss at the end. Dol mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it, I actually was looking forward to this match. I enjoyed this match. I didn't think I would. Uh, that was fun. yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, then you had uh, an 18 second match. No, I'm sorry. You had uh, Edge beating Randy Orton in a last man standing Wait. match. This match went 36 minutes yep. and 35 seconds. I got to tell Very you, long. I attempted to rewatch this. It's tough. Uh, it, it, it is tough. It, it was. I feel terrible for Edge because this was mm -hmm. supposed to be his moment. And remember, they're trying to fill some time. I don't know why they decided to do 36 minutes. I think this match should have been about 18, 19 minutes long. If okay. You think about it. I don't think it should have been long. It didn't have to go long. They just, I, I don't know. If you ask me, I think the intention of this was to film as like a 30 something minute match and then just edit it down. And they decided not yeah. to edit it down. Uh, I, listen, man, I don't want this to be, I hope this is not the last edge match. It was just the problem wasn't the match. It wasn't the guy's. It was that it was too long. It was twice the length it should have been. I agree with you. I think this was a great for a guy who hasn't had a match in nine years for him to go thirty six minutes, arguably longer since they're they were probably filming it for a while. Oh yeah, and setting everything up like specifically, Edge knocked it out of the park. Uh, it was a little too long as a fan, but you know what? Good for him. I think you're gonna get a, like another Edge match. Um. At SummerSlam, and I do think it's gonna be Edge, Drew McIntyre. Uh, maybe maybe SummerSlam is gonna be Edge and Edge and Orton again, or Money Back. By the way, here here's a schedule for WWE TV tapings. They got the okay to film uh, Raw, SmackDown, and NXT from four ten to four six sixteen. So they're starting next week. 
the 10th yeah, begins right. on Friday, and they're going to Thursday. They're filming every day. They're filming every TV going towards uh, going through Money in the Bank. And the pay-per-view, Money in the Bank, will be live at the Performance Center. That's cool. All right. Yeah. Another another ladder match in the uh, arena. Credit to Anthony in our chat room for that little uh little. I, I knew that they were. I didn't know the dates yeah. exactly, but uh, I guess they decided against going into a building, which they I believe they would have had the okay if they went to Nebraska. So go yeah. ahead. So what do you what do you, because I know. Listen, I you you see wrestling, and I think this is why the show works so well. You see wrestling in a different mm-hmm. view, and I see it in a different view. Do you, did the length bother you as much as as maybe it bothered me? Yes and no. Yeah, I I I I, I can categorize the length of that match, but I can justify it by saying like, yeah, we haven't seen this dude in nine years. Who who cares? Let it be long. Whatever. These guys are telling a really good story, right? Was I bored with it? No. Uh, did I? While we were watching it, I remember just being deep in conversation with everybody we were talking to. And then turning up, looking up, and being like, "Yeah, this thing is still on." Yeah, you know. By the way, by the way, so it lost me a little bit. Yeah. He, here's the other thing here. So you have Edge mm-hmm. and Orton. Yeah, yeah. That was one feud that was built at Royal Rumble. What was the other one Absolutely. that was built? Do you remember what the um, other feud was? Because that's the big one. What Drew and Brock? It was that's- no. No, Edge and Roman Reigns. Right. Okay. And that was the other one. By the way, we're having some internet issues here. Sorry. My my I don't know if you're watching this live. You may be having some hiccups down podcast nobody's noticing. But that mm-hmm. is the other match. I'm cool with that. Edge. It's Edge and Roman. Both have yeah. the spear. The title goes back on Roman at Money in the Bank. And at SummerSlam, the match mm-hmm. is Edge versus Roman Reigns for the WWE Championship. Oh, Universal Championship. Can you see Edge having another run with that belt? Yes, I do, and I'll tell you why. When that belt was created, when that Universal title was created, the reason Mm -hmm. why Brock Lesnar got it and Bill Goldberg got it, and then you had guys like Kevin Owens and Finn Balor, it was to build the quality of the title. If you have... They didn't want this to be a secondary belt. They wanted, Mm -hmm. you know, world champions previous world champions holding this title to elevate it in the history books. Not for today, for 10 years from now. When you look at the lineage of this title and you say, oh my God, Bill Goldberg had the the title. Brock Lesnar had the title. Uh, Edge had the title. Triple H had the title. Uh, You know, I'm just naming top names. Previous top names. The Rock had the title. I'm just throwing, you know, that as an example. (laughs) Edge winning the title (laughs) It's it, obviously it's really awesome for Edge mm-hmm. to come back. It's a great story to win the title, come back, hold this world championship once again. I think he's like a mm-hmm. 13 time champion right now, right? Who Edge? Yeah, yeah. Edge he is has a, a title. Time champion. Uh, it's something. It's something very much higher than most people expect. Give him that 14 mm-hmm. time. You know, now everybody's a little close to that 16 time world championship. You know, 17 time world yeah. championship. I always said they need to do a major scramble, right? Who are the guys up mm-hmm. there to possibly hold that title 17 times? You have John Cena with 16. You have Randy mm-hmm. Orton with, I, I'm just, I don't know the exact number. Somebody in the chat could probably tell me. 13 times, yeah. whatever it is. You have Hunter up Edge. there with a with high number. You have Edge up there with mm-hmm. a very high number. You could do some sort of scramble on, you know, which guy's going to beat trip, which guy's going to beat the record? Which guy's going to yeah. beat the, the, you know, the, the, the 16 time uh, world championship record? I think that's a great but concept. We thought it was Cena for the longest time, right? I I I knew that Cena would be the first to tie it, but I don't know mm-hmm. who would possibly. Okay, so Triple H has 14 world championships. Okay. Uh, here we go. Hulk Hogan has 12, which mm-hmm. obviously that's is not going to be him. Yeah. When is this as of? Let me see when this is as of. I can't tell what the date is of this. So whatever. This is on WWE's website. So I don't know how accurate this is. So Hogan, obviously, 12-time world champion. Randy Orton, 13. 13-time world champion. Um, mm-hmm. Hunter has it 14 times. John Cena, 16 wow. times. Ric Flair, 16 times. I don't know where Edge falls on this. So maybe Edge is 12? I want to say Edge, Edge is, is 11. 30. I'm sorry. Edge won it Edge 11, 11 times. Okay. 
Okay, so now you make them 12. You can have them go back and forth a little bit, 13, 14, yeah. and you can build it. But they want this title to be as prestigious as a WWE title. Yeah, That's the plan. 100%. But um, here's here's an interesting thing ahead. too. So uh, it the title has only been around for four years, right? Mm -hmm. And it's only been a handful of guys that they flip flop. So you had Finn, unfortunately, mm -hmm. he got hurt. Then you had yeah. Kevin Owens, yep, who got smushed by Goldberg. Mm -hmm. You had Brock, Roman, yep. Brock again, Seth, Brock again, Seth, Bray Wyatt, Goldberg, and then Braun. So you know Brock's held that Universal title three times. You How many know, times so is Brock like Lesnar a World Champion? Eight. He's an eight-time world champion. He's an eight-time world champion. And uh, I think that I agree 100% with what you're saying. Like, there are certain guys that, that could be built up to have that longevity that where you're going to reach double digits, you know? Yeah. Um, Brock, I would assume this guy's going to get some other kind of belt at some point, right? Uh, Brock Lesnar? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Listen, Brock Lesnar is... I, I I understand why people get upset at Brock holding a title and Brock being the guy. Right. But if you, it outside of what happened with this year's WrestleMania, right? Like forget about forget about the the the, the global mm -hmm. catastrophe that's happening. But the whole point of Brock Lesnar being that guy with the title is to create a Drew McIntyre. That was the exactly. point from day one. Now, did they make him? I don't think so because of where it happened and how it happened, but God damn, that WrestleMania elimination was that was the start of that. So Wrestle uh, that, that Royal Rumble elimination, WrestleMania, yeah. that him holding that title with Brock Lesnar on the ground with the crowd losing it, that's mm -hmm. been the whole point of Brock Lesnar. Now, whether they, they continue on and they and he has a great run with this Drew McIntyre or Brock gets it back and they built somebody else, that's that, I'm sure that's gonna happen, whatever that is, but this was the point of this. Uh, Brock did Absolutely. a phenomenal job at making you hate him, making you want the title off of him, and this has been mm -hmm. long term. I, I I'm one of the few that didn't see the problem with Brock Lesnar being that guy and not being around the WWE title. I'm telling you right now, both titles, the world title and the Universal title, will not be defended as much as you think it will. Right, right. You know, I I I agree, especially now. Um, I also think Drew was Drew is the perfect guy to take that belt off of Brock because yeah. he's way bigger than him. He's was believable. That match went about four and a half minutes, and it was just you you felt yeah. the action as opposed to like the Braun Goldberg match. Let, let's get um, back to that match. Really, yeah, let's yeah. because I know I know you. I want to get your opinion. I have a bunch of questions for you because we didn't talk about that match. Let's go backwards after mm. Randy Orton and then uh, get back to it. All right, so uh, right after Randy Orton, uh, Rob Gronkowski beat Mojo Raleigh in a no DQ match for uh, a Falls, Falls Count Anywhere match for the and by the way, twenty four seven championship. It did everything that it was supposed seconds. to do. All over the New York Post, ESPN, every news outlet had that yep. Rob Gr uh, Gronk is a mm -hmm. WWE champion. Uh, at one hundred percent, we were talking about this on Sunday, where like they're popping those those legit sports numbers. And this dude yeah. took a dive, right? He took a dive off the sign. Yeah. He took a dive. <laughs> he did, like the coffin drop. <laughs> um, like this. Street, <laughs> street Profits uh, beat Angel Garza and Austin Theory. Uh, six minutes 20, defending the Raw Tag, the Raw tag Team Championships. Uh, that was fine. Uh, Bailey ended up uh, beating Lacey Evans, Naomi, Sasha, and Tamina in a 20-minute match. I don't even remember watching this match. I think I was checked out at this point. Um, yeah, I, well, you were, you, you, with, at what point did you check out? Uh, probably right around here. And then the, fiend, is this when your brain melted? Uh, this is when my brain melted. And okay. then, um, the fiend Bray Wyatt versus John Cena in the firefly Funhouse match, 13 minutes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Love yeah. it. I feel like they need to do more of these. Well, how did you feel about the, the fun house match? Okay. So the fun house match, I, I, Obviously, I was. If you watched the feed, I was very excited for. It. I loved it. I loved watching. But you gotta also remember, it was cool. We had you on the phone. We had MG Geek. We had Shin. I think Jonathan mm -hmm. had called in at that point. Uh, we had like, and the chat was going. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. So the whole uh, back and forth and the uh, the the just the dynamic of what was going on, I loved it. So I yeah. saw about twenty percent of people dislike this match. From from online right. criticism and what I heard. 
I said, you know mm-hmm. what? I want to rewatch it. So I told my wife, by the way, Bachelor 3000, $1.99. What's up, my friend? Another great guy. Listen, Bachelor 3000 helped us out so much also. So big shout out to him. Um, Huge shout out. Also, Bianca Belair debuted also. That was the other thing. Bianca yes. now is, is part of the, the roster, which we'll talk about raw. Um, I rewatched it. So my kids love Bray Wyatt, okay? Mm-hmm. They call him the man in the red shirt. I'm sorry, the boy in the red shirt. They absolutely <laughs> love the Firefly Funhouse. They sing the song, the, the entrance theme. I, 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 it's fascinating how they pause and they watch all of it. I put on a marathon of it for them because they were begging me. Mm-hmm. I, got, I got a three-year-old and a four-year-old. Obviously, maybe not the most appropriate for them, but they, they, they're so fast. <laughs> Fascinated by it. So when I had it on uh, right before bedtime, which is not the time to be watching that, thinking about it now in hindsight, mm. uh, my wife was there. My wife's like, what are you watching? I'm like, I want you to watch this. I want to get your opinion of it. But I explained to her what everything meant, right? So right. I, I watched the whole thing from beginning to end. And I have to tell you, I still loved it. I loved what they did. My wife mm-hmm. didn't get it. So I explained to her. I'm like, oh. Well, this part is this, and this is why Vince is there, and this is what this means, and this is what this means. It's a lot of inside baseball. She goes, ah, you know what? Now it makes sense. I get it. It's mm. very meta. It's very I, – I totally get it. I think a lot of the people – not saying all of them, right? Because I know that there mm. are a lot of people that are long-term wrestling fans that didn't like it, and I'm excluding you from this because everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I'll give you right, a great right. example. Coco, right? Or Coco. Mm-hmm. Coco – Hated it. I mean, just despised the whole thing. But he uh, hated it because he has no idea who Prototype was. He has no idea that what that Ruthless Aggression promo was. He doesn't know mm-hmm. why he came out in NWO. Everything was just totally random to him. He didn't understand the Eric Bischoff mm-hmm. reference. Right. Everything was just random and put in there. When to us, we're like, okay, it's the heel turn. It's the Hogan comparison. It's that he mm-hmm. was a workout guy, and that's why he was doing that in the 80s promo because he was a body guy, the promo that you don't need any personality or any ability to become successful. All you need is a body. I right. really liked it. Uh, and listen, dude, and mm-hmm. you don't have to like it. I personally liked it. Yeah, same here. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought the uh, if, you, if you think of that, if you remove yourself from that production and you know wrestling is all about storytelling, they – legitimately gave us the they filmed the story that they would have told in a ring right yes cena cena doubting himself ruthless aggression the nwo stuff which was great because that was supposed that would that alludes to people wanting cena to turn heel six years ago right and cena not pulling the trigger doubting and hitting himself. him with the chair yeah and hitting him with the chair and the end of the match showing cena go down and then him disappearing like finally we can't we really can't see him so so cena and aj styles are dead right they're about that they're 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 in the like, they're <laughs> in the okay you know when in dragon ball z when you die and you go to you go to that island uh to the, to the planet yeah, yeah. that's where they are right now they who, who's uh, whose planet was that <laughs> they're on russell island right now <laughs> they're on russell island right now yeah they got their their they have halos on their head they're somewhere on a planet and they're going to be resurrected by the undertaker and brought back uh, I, Adam in the chat room says, I get what they were trying to do, and I like my wrestling with a little bit of nonsense, but I can't buy into magic teleportation. We've, uh, we've seen teleportation in wrestling for like the last 50 years. They've been teleporting. I, I, I could teleport right now. Yeah, go for it. Um, oh, by the way, uh, yeah. I'll, do it after, I'll do it after this. Uh, but, oh, Kami's on. Yeah, King Kami. K- mm-hmm. King Kaya. King Kaya. There you go. King Kai. King Kai. King Kai? King mm-hmm. Kai. I forgot. The little fat guy. Um, I, I, I enjoyed it because, listen, if this was at WrestleMania, I would say, like, why aren't they having a match? But right. with, with what they were doing, it's silly. It's nonsense. It was the point of it. I, mm-hmm. I, they took a risk. It worked for me. It didn't work for a lot of other people. I agree with that. I think for a lot of the people, they were like, what am I watching? What's going on here? And the, na- the narrative that Bray was telling the audience was, 
fantastic because they went they gave you like a little bit they pulled the curtain back just a little bit and they addressed everything that fans have been saying for the last six years also what a blow off to a six-year feud right yeah yeah maybe maybe they're gonna have another match i don't know but if it is a blow off i thought it was done really well john cena looks like such a weirdo though in what way just he got his face got so old well he's you know he's 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 not getting younger no um, dude, imagine if this was John Cena's last match. He's 42 years old, dude. He's not, he's not that much older than us. No, not at all. But you know, like the dude had, he arguably had the hardest schedule, uh, of any superstar in like the last like 15 years. Right. Yeah. Just a lot of doing, people forget that. You know, a lot of like people not forget. only being, yeah, like not only being a multi-time world champ, but this dude has done every single media that's ever been asked of him. And that's a lot, man. Here's the other thing. Everybody always had time off, uh, like Hogan's run. Uh, John mm-hmm. Cena's run was what? He, he, he was active from 2002 all the way to 2015, right? Full-time? Yeah. So let's say 13 years of full-time, full, full-time on the road with a full right. schedule. Didn't really take off. Uh, like Hogan went away for a little bit, came back. The Rock went away. Austin had his injuries and went away. Uh, Hunter right. even had injuries, went away. This guy was there for all these years. Um, mm-hmm. Hogan actually had a grueling 85, 84 to 84 to 90, 90, I think 1990. He 84 to 1990. He worked a full schedule. Yeah. Uh, this guy, this guy went hard. You're right. Yeah, he went pretty hard. It had an effect on him. This dude's a 16 time. If you look at just his WWE accolades, it's, you know, he's up there. Like, he won two Royal Rumbles. He won uh, Money in the Bank. He got, he's a 16 time world champion, multiple time tag champion. Um, and the dude's like, he, I feel like he's a weird guy where, like, he's, he's one of those people, like, when we were kids and you'd see Hogan's face everywhere, or like when you got a little older and it was Austin's and The Rock's faces everywhere, mm-hmm. John Cena's. His face has been in so much media as the face of WWE. It's mind blowing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Great freaking match, though. I loved it. I want to see more cinematic wrestling stuff. All right, what else? What's and now the main event? Yeah, main event. Uh, Drew McIntyre beating Brock Lesnar, uh, four minutes thirty five seconds. Uh, I did think Paul Heyman was going to turn on Brock. You thought so? I thought so, but then I realized, like, Drew doesn't need any help on the microphone, so they would never do that. Uh, it was a quick match, four and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm curious how long the original match was going to be. Probably the same know. amount of time, right? You think so? I, I, I think they were going to give it some time. Yeah. I thought they were going to give it some time. Maybe, maybe it would have been a 10-minute match, but this was a four and a half minute match. Fine, I'm okay with that. Uh, immediately started off with a, um, with the, what, what does he call his move? The Claymore. The Claymore started off with a Claymore, uh, mm-hmm. F5 Claymore. They really, it's like they ran the last like five minutes of the match in the beginning. Uh, Drew McIntyre defeated mm-hmm. Brock Lesnar for the WWE championship. He got no pyro, no big celebration to end WrestleMania, no crowd. Uh, you know, this guy looks great by the way. On Raw, he came out with that title around his waist. He looks phenomenal with that title. And they filmed that right after his, uh, right after he beat Brock. Yes, right after. <laughs> uh, which, which is like right, and it's kind of interesting too because then all of a sudden, Big Show, Big Show came out basically doing the promo that we've been doing on air for the last couple of weeks. I was hanging out in the back, brother, and I couldn't help but overhear that you're the champion now, and people thought. Drew was going to drop it to the big show. Did they really? Yeah. Yeah. People were getting like, they were getting set to be deflated by this dude just losing to the big show, but you needed the big show on TV to advertise the big show show. Yeah. Because he was supposed to do that on, um, uh, at WrestleMania and, uh, it didn't happen. That was supposed to be the big, that was supposed to be a big deal that they were going to do that at WrestleMania and, and promote the show. And obviously it couldn't happen because everything going on. Uh, what did you think of Raw? Did you obviously this was not a night after WrestleMania Monday Night Raw? Uh, but what did you make of the show? 
Uh, it was fine. I thought it was like, I thought they did. I think they, they were able to pull off something rem- kind of, again, three hours is a long time, but they did a decent job. You know, you had like Oscar Liv Morgan, you had the, uh, the, the Austin theory, Angel Garza match again with uh, the street profits. Right. Yeah. Um, and then that, then them teaming with Bianca Belair and Selena Vega with, with the other guys. So that was fun. Um, it was almost like your WrestleMania, like part two, except not really. Like Alistair Black, Apollo Cruz is fine. Uh, I do like that they teamed Ricochet with Cedric Alexander. Yeah, I think that's a cool team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and plus, like classic, give let's give the guy a night off type match. Seth Rollins beat like an NXT guy. Uh, it was fine, you know. Like, and again, Big Show versus Drew. Real quick, nice, you know, like I'm glad uh, they're giving, I'm glad they're feeding people to Drew now. You know? I think that that should be, that should be the plan going forward where you just, you have title mm-hmm. matches. He defends the title and he just gets fed, you know, have, have um, these guys go up, you know, I think it'll be, it'll be a good story for him to kind of be this defending champion, uh, defend the title every week, uh, feed him guys and just have them lose and prepare whoever's next. For this feud. I don't know who's next for his feud. I don't know what the plan is going forward. I I was told some names uh, mm-hmm. before this was this was happening. I don't think any of that is happening now. Um, I, We'll see what happens. I don't know. I, do they have guys ready for Drew? That's the big question. Who are the big exactly. heels for him to feud with? And they have not done a good job at creating that. You got Seth Rollins, obviously. On that side, mm-hmm. who else do they have as a big heel on that on the raw roster? That is true. I mean, you could do you can do flippy uh, flippy floppy and have a Bray Wyatt like a solid Bray Wyatt Drew McIntyre feud. I think that would be a lot of fun. I guess so, but I mean, right now with the current roster that they have, who's mm-hmm. who do they have? Seth, Bray Wyatt. Um, maybe you could flip a couple of guys. I'm just I'm looking at the I'm looking yeah. at the rosters here. I uh, I guess uh, Danny there's Bryan. really nobody. Flip, flip Danny Bryan. You're gonna have to flip somebody, but as a heel, yeah. uh, you don't really have a roster on the raw side, which is uh, weird to think about. Randy Bobby Orton. Lashley, Bobby Lashley, eh. Gender. Ran- yeah, Gender maybe would be Rand- a good choice. But isn't Rand- Randy's on Raw right? I think Randy's yeah, Randy's on Raw. Yeah. Okay, so you got Randy Orton. You got mm-hmm. maybe you, maybe you could do gender when he comes back. You say like, oh look, he's they were partners and all this stuff. He turns on him. You could have some sort of program there. Uh, but looking yeah. at this roster, it is weak. It mm-hmm. is very weak as far as a heel goes on the Raw side. It it's not a heel heavy WWE at this point. You know, you no don't because really it, have it was like no because Brock Lesnar was the guy. He was the top heel. Hmm. Maybe you do Drew Brock part two, um, or this is Brock just going away for a little bit, you know? Drew Brock part two will definitely happen. You got mm-hmm. Eric Rowan. Uh, Sheamus is on right. SmackDown. Lashley. Maybe you got Lashley there. Yeah. He, he's, he's so, in my opinion, as a wrestling fan, that dude is the most mediocre. I I mean, listen. A lot of these guys are mediocre, but they, mm-hmm. they they have a problem on that side with the roster where you don't have top contenders challenging for this title. I on the SmackDown side, it's a little bit more interesting because obviously you have uh you do have Roman Reigns, you do have Daniel Bryan, mm-hmm. you do have Edge now. Um, that could probably challenge for that. He could go back and forth because he's not committed to a roster. Um. AJ Styles, you know, you do have AJ. It's likely going to be Seth. And and I really, I, eh, mm-hmm. eh, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, the dude is supremely talented, but all this, I also find his stuff, like, as a fan, just very mediocre. You know? Joe, like when the, he comes back? Yeah, that's good. You know, Samoa Joe versus Drew McIntyre, that'd be awesome. Um, Finn Balor. You know, like, I feel like you would need believable because 
like we were saying before, the pedigree on this belt is very interesting. And this is also technically like in the last few years, it's been like the quote unquote, like big guy belt, right? The world title. The world title. No, I'm sorry. The universal title is the big guy belt. Um, yeah. I forgot that Brock had the regular yeah. no, world WWE title. championship. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting. The, the The problem that they run into is you have two gigantic people holding your major titles, right? And even and who's the NXT champ right now? Adam Cole? Adam Cole. Imagine them visually saying, hey, uh, why don't we do a triple threat? Adam Cole, Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre. That dude would get lost in the shuffle like big time, right? I, I, he would be, he's too small. I mean, that's the reality of it too, for, for those big guys. But again, that's the separation between WWE and NXT. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the right. big guy's title. This is, this is the top notch guys. They, it, it is interesting to look at the roster right now and say, holy shit, they have not done a good job at creating a top heel to challenge for this. Other than Seth Rollins being that guy, uh, the mm -hmm. raw side is very weak when you look at, when you look at the heels. And they're gonna have that. Yeah. They're gonna have a struggle unless they say a babyface is challenging for it, or they do a a a shakeup again. You know. Um. Yeah, the shakeup would be a good idea. I could see people kind of like coming out of the since he's a fighting champ. You could definitely do face versus face. But who is a big enough heel to step up to the plate and challenge Drew? Nobody, right? Nobody Bray other Wyatt than is the yeah. only person well, I could think of. Well, here's the rumor: it's gonna be Tyson Fury. Oh yeah, that's right. That's a, that's the rumor. Mm -hmm. Um, I I how do, I how do you I feel about that? that? Sucks. I don't want to see it, dude. I don't he didn't care about do Tyson a terrible Fury. job. He didn't do a terrible job of Braun Strowman. Also, the dude is very charismatic. Very charismatic, that's... but I don't. I don't know, man. I you you don't like it when wrestling extends past a certain point, right? No, I, I, I find it's fine for what they did, but for a world title match, um, whatever. When are you going to do this? SummerSlam Gronk. is going to be. Here's why. Here's why I bother. It's not the the match doesn't bother me, right? <coughs> it's, right. He. I don't want it to fall into the Daniel Bryan trap. When Daniel Bryan won that title, they really didn't have opponents lined up for him. Right. And that was really beat bad. <laughs> do you remember his first feud? Yeah. It was Kane. Yeah, yeah, and it really and it really sucked the energy out of the room. So I don't, and WWE tends to fall into this where they have a babyface win the title, mm -hmm. and they have nobody lined up. That's a major feud for them going forward. Yeah, yeah. I Listen, mean, who Austin, would you like to see? Austin. What? By the way, Austin was the same thing. That's why McMahon had to come in. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I I I think in reality, if you look at the rosters, I would say the Seth Rollins is the one that makes the most sense. Um, and that'll probably mm -hmm. be it. I think the rematch, obviously, with Brock is going to happen. Uh, right. I don't know. Unless they move people around, I don't know what the answer to this is. I would much rather keep Drew as a face, also, because I think I think he's really hitting his stride right now. Yeah, he he's totally he's totally hitting his stride right now. Totally. And plus, they still need that that crowd pop, you know, when they finally yeah. have live shows again, and this guy comes out and. You know, everybody's just like loving it. I'm I'm just going down the roster here, and it's very baby mm -hmm. face heavy. Yeah. Who the hell's Tyson T Bone? It's, NXT it's the, UK. NXT UK. <laughs> there you go. It's the uh, how about how about if you send Drew uh, to face Walter? That would be a good matchup. Listen, dude, I would love that. That's actually a great idea. Drew and him, mm -hmm. or uh, Walter and and Drew would be a great match. You could have uh, both champions. Mm -hmm. That's great. Winner, uh, winner take all. Maybe do a winner take all situation. Nakamura could go to the raw side. Maybe shake that up. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that they could do. I'm just I'm not talking about these in between matches. I'm talking about uh, what the next humongous you know long term feud, the next three month three month program or right. two month program is for him. I don't know the answer to that. We'll find out. I, I whatever they had planned obviously is gone. Uh, right. The 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 SmackDown side is way more predictable because you have a lot of talent on that side that you could do. Mm -hmm. So Braun has a title. 
Uh, you, how many people could be in that mix for that title? You got Braun, obviously. Goldberg's gone. Maybe you could do a rematch of sorts. I don't know. Uh, you have uh, Roman Reigns. You have Daniel Bryan. You have AJ Styles. You have Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a, a wide uh, edge could be in that program. You have a wide range of people that could that long term programs. You don't have that Absolutely. on the other side. Yeah. Uh, turn Keith Lee heel versus Drew McIntyre. Keith Lee, it could only be a babyface. This guy has to be the ultimate babyface. That is true. He's, he's a world true. champion babyface that, that people will love. Mm -hmm. uh, Keith Lee, Bray Wyatt, amazing. Keith Lee needs to win the, with the NXT title first. Absolutely. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm very uh, yeah. curious where they go with this. Obviously, the next month is not going to be easy. The next month mm -hmm. is going to be another bunch of these weird, weird shows. Um, I'm hoping we're out of this by the end of May. That's a hope. And maybe that. in June, maybe yeah. June, they could start doing some smaller buildings. Yeah. You know, just get in front of somebody. I, or they could still, by the way, they could still do, they could still do the performance center. If they open up that they could have an audience. That's going to be right. the advantage. Have... And I think, I think WWE will probably get an audience before AEW does. Okay. Um, I think they could open up the performance center for faculty and staff and, and, and students, and they could fill that crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, they could do something like that. They have full sale, obviously, that they could use as well. WWE, I anticipate by, by mid-May, they'll have an audience. Okay. I'll, I could see that. I could definitely yeah. see that. Something's going to happen. You know, like when it does happen, it's going to be great for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, submit your questions cool. in the chat room. Uh, on YouTube, youtube.com slash Podcast is where we record the show each and every week. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube. You can fund us on YouTube. You can fund us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Podcast. You can go there. You can buy our t-shirts. By the way, we got a bunch of tees coming up. Very nice. Some Anshante action. Uh, by the way, we want to talk about Anshante. <laughs> Here is the Matt Men Podcast debut of Anshante. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you I'm ready? So ready? Here is Anshante. For people watching the video feed, here he is. This is the moment you've been waiting for. This oh. is Anshante. Oh. <laughs> here you go. I can't stop giggling. That is his WrestleMania debut. Anshante. Debut at WrestleMania last year. <laughs> I will. I will post this tonight on uh, on Twitter. Mm. I'll post this on Twitter. Uh, Bob Rowe asks, what do you think about Dr. Hulk's no vaccine needed recommendation? I saw that. He says with prayers and vitamins, he could just get through this whole fucking thing. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm that's the first curse brother. word I did. Oh, wow, nice. Good job. Yeah, that's the first time I'm I an cursed today. Brother. Yeah. Uh, today or like ever? Do you think Hogan's an anti-vaxxer? <laughs> no. <laughs> how, do you think he cured, how do you think Hogan would cure rubella? I'll leg drop. The leg drop on Rubella. I'm going to take that vial, brother, and just hit it with a vaccine. They'll just line everybody up, and yeah. he, it's like they send up like a triage, and it's just Hogan leg dropping. Next, boom, next, boom. He just leg drops polio, rubella, smallpox, and SARS out of everybody. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Uh, what do you think, Hogan's? MLB think will be back next month. Yes, MLB is back next month, but... MLB, yeah. it seems like they may just do all the games in front of no crowd in uh, in Arizona, which is fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Go ahead. Um, do you think Ronda and Becky and Rock versus Road locks for Mania? No. Uh, let me. Uh, you broke up. What did you say? Do you think Ronda and Becky and Roman versus Rock are locks for Mania next year? Um. No. I I'll, I'll tell you what I think that Rhonda and Becky is definitely going to happen. I don't know what the situation is because of her Rhonda's personal life. And, you know, she's going to get pregnant or what. I don't know. But that's definitely going to happen. I know Roman versus Rock is a, a big-time match that they want to do. I, I don't know. I know that that's been discussed multiple times. I would love for that to happen. You know, add the Rock to that lineage of the Universal title. Have him have him beat Roman Reigns, and then have him build somebody else. Have him drop the title to somebody and build that person. I think that's a great way to kind of add more to that title. I I would say it's, I'm gonna go with yes. I'm gonna go with 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 today. I'm gonna say that is mm -hmm. in the plans. 
Okay. Um, when do we get the Matt Man exotic vinyl? Uh, I have to, I have to film it. I, I have to, I have to get the film it. Jesus Christ. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> so here, here's, here's what I was thinking. Either Rich and I would do a special LP. Mm -hmm. uh to to add to the vinyl i spoke to i sent an email out yesterday to two companies that could print it for us uh it's not cheap to get individual vinyls done but I, i'm working on it awesome. i i anticipate um, probably within the next two weeks i'll i'll have something that's beautiful i'm excited um yeah. have you guys talked about the kenny omega documentary that dropped i'm unaware of anything new i know the tsn one has been floating around for a while um, unless you're talking about the HBO one that that was in the works a couple of years ago, I don't know which one that it, this is. Uh, I know that there was one a while ago that that was about you know Kenny and 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 his interests, but I don't know I don't know which documentary this is. The one the TSN one was basically like the Golden Lovers, yeah, kind of documentary. Yeah, um, HBO was supposed to have one, but. I, I don't know what are you talking about the guy the guy in the chat room who asked this yeah um I think it was Bachelor three thousand uh do you think Seth versus Edge is being saved for Mania I think Seth versus I think Edge versus everybody Edge versus Daniel Bryan Edge versus AJ Styles Edge versus Seth Edge versus Roman uh, Edge versus Edge Edge versus Edge Edge versus um uh Drew for edge it's interesting because you could have a a, a wide mm -hmm. range of opponents and i would want to see every single one of those matches every single one yeah absolutely absolutely the dude's awesome man. he he was always one of my favorites yeah um are you excited for the brawl for all dark side of the ring tonight yeah i'm curious what they how they how they paint that picture because it was the dumbest idea ever uh I think, you know, like, I feel like that's an interesting moment of wrestling, if you guys don't remember it, is when they had legitimate boxing in wrestling. They would take tough guys on the roster and have them fight each other every week with the winner being legitimate tough guy, Bart Gunn. What? Okay, so here, here's the interesting thing for this. Would people, I'm curious how they're going to paint this picture, because if you really think about it, the Brawl for All was set up for... Uh, Dr. Death, Steve Williams. Right. Right? That was the setup because he was a known tough guy. And this mm -hmm. guy was going to be the, the guy. So this went on. When did this start? August 24th, 19, uh, June 29, 1998 to August 24th, 1998. So mm -hmm. you got to also remember about Dr. Death. Dr. Death was supposed to be Steve Austin's major opponent that year. Right. He got banged up. He was a little hurt. So they they had to delay it. This tournament was going to create him as the opponent after winning the Brawl for All. There was a number of issues with this Brawl for All. So the way that it worked, uh, each match consisted of three one-minute rounds where wrestlers mm -hmm. would do punches and grounds. Each punch connected would be five points. A clean takedown would be five points. A knockout would be worth ten points. If a wrestler was mm -hmm. knocked out, obviously the match ended, right? Uh, it was scored by judges along the ring. I think Monsoon uh -huh. was one of them. Uh, also, you had UFC fighters, remember, in the WWE at that point. You had Dan Severn and Ken Shamrock. Shamrock right. declined to take part in this, uh, while Severn defeated the Godfather in the first round, but then withdrew from the tournament, mm -hmm. stating that he had nothing to prove. Severn asserted Th listen, that... Listen. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was uh, going to say, Severn the interesting thing... Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing about this is, like, I, this did, from day one, this did not go how they wanted it, right? Mark Merrow beat Steve Blackman in the first round. Mark Merrow beat Steve Blackman, yes. Right. Um, and then you had uh, Bart Gunn beating Bob Holly, right? And then Bart you had Gunn, Steve Williams. Bart Gunn beat Bob. Okay, hold on. Let me see this. Okay, mm -hmm. it was the first round, right? Steve Blackman and Mark Merrow. Merrow advanced. Then you had right. Bradshaw and Mark Cantonbury. Henry O'Gogwin, by the way, Godwin. Mm -hmm. uh, Bradshaw won. Then you have Brackus and mm -hmm. Savio Vega. Savio won. Draws and Road Warrior Hawk. It was a draw. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a draw, but I think Draws advanced for whatever reason. Bart for Gunn points. and Yeah, for points. Bart Gunn and Bob Holly. Bart Gunn advanced. Qu mm -hmm. Quebecer Pierre, PCO. And Steve Williams, <laughs> Steve Williams advanced. Uh, Godfather mm -hmm. and Dan Severn. Severn won, 
but withdrew from it because he said it was it was nonsense. He's like, I'm not doing this. I'm going to beat everybody. Everybody sucks. So forget about this. And I don't want to risk getting hurt. Then he had eight Mm -hmm. ball and two cold Scorpio. This is now the following round. Mark Marrow and Bradshaw. Bradshaw beat Mark Marrow. Uh, You had Savio Vega and Draws. Draws beat Savio Vega. Bart Gunn beat Dr. Death Steve Williams. KO, by the way. Mm Mm-hmm. Crazy. And you had and you had uh, Godfather and Two Cold Scorpio. Godfather advanced. Then it was bra- semifinals. Bradshaw and Draws. Uh, Bradshaw advanced and Bart Gunn to beat uh, Godfather and advanced and Bradshaw got knocked the f out by Bart Gunn. Right, and then fascinating. Fast forward to WrestleMania. The the winner faces like amateur boxer uh, Butterbean. At WrestleMania 15, right? Yeah, and, and it was like a 10-second fight. He got his ass handed to him. By the way, little correction. Um, Steve Blackman won the, the bout, but he withdrew due to an injury in training. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. But the Butterbean knockout is one of the worst knockouts I've ever seen. So bad. So bad. And so what you the- did with this, you exposed the business. You exposed that none mm-hmm. of them could really fight, and you made the winner look totally weak. Right, which was a huge mistake from the get-go. Also, like, according to uh, Billy Gunn was on a podcast a couple of weeks ago, and he said, with regard to Bart Gunn, was that he would beat up, if he got into a fight, he would basically just beat up everybody in the room. Doesn't didn't Bart matter Gunn. who you were. If you're, Bart Gunn. If you were involved, he would just, like, like Ken Patera style, just take everybody out, you know? That's really funny. That's really funny. Uh, so I'm looking forward to what story they tell. I'm, I'm positive it's going to be that Vince Russo is an idiot mm-hmm. and he exposed the business. That's going to be the that's going to be the story. But we'll figure out mm-hmm. what they do. What else do we have here? Uh, let's see. Did Casey Kent and Zahra and Ricochet break up? Who knows? Uh, let's see. How far back are we going? Uh. Uh, da, da, da. Maybe he'll turn heel Roman. Uh, maybe he'll Roman. That, that might be good. Are you excited for the Brawl for Here we go. Uh, Kenny Omega documentary we spoke about. Uh, the winner's prize was getting knocked out by Butterbean. Does Ashante have his own interview segment like the Flower Shop or Snake Pit? We need to come up with one. Oh my God. It, it, you and, need and, to. And, and the whole thing, I'm laid out on a velvet couch and the microphone comes down. From the ceiling like this, and it's a very cylindrical shaped microphone. <laughs> very phallic shaped microphone. Yeah, I just lay like this, and I'm like, oh, like that. Can we film those? Yeah, we should. Uh, oh it's a God, co- career killer. Injured people. Yes, it did. Uh, I think they're just gonna switch guys around. Let's see. I'm trying to find mm-hmm. the Sapphire Lounge. That's what it'll be called. You Ooh, know what? We so can film good. this at the club. I could just yes, lay out there with the lights on, and I'm just interviewing people in front of the stripper pole. Enchante is rumored to be in 2K21 cover. I think if we shoot it at the club, and we can start it with a, a lot of the ladies surrounding you, and then you going, get away from me. Get away. Very, very snagglepuss like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it could be called the Champagne Room with Enchante. Oh, so good. This is, this right. is the best thing we're ever going to do. Okay, here's a good one from Mike Awesome in the chat room. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you want to see Aleister Black versus Undertaker in a in a depths of hell cinematic match? Saint Mercy Years, Saint Mercy Years WrestleMania. I think he meant to say at next year's WrestleMania. Uh, at next year's WrestleMania, you know what? You could do that with those two. Do a creepy uh, coffin match. Absolutely, I think if you did something cool with both of them, you Aleister Black is this close. To getting um, superpowers, by the way, like yes. dark powers. <laughs> yes, he is <laughs> very close. Like I feel like they'll give him like fire or something. Undertaker had electricity and smoke, and he would dim the lights and turn the lights on. And, he could and teleport, fire now. Right? He has fire and... now. Also, he he learned fire. Oh, so good. He and and a, and a laser that shoots his uh his symbol. Yeah. Um. Any other questions before we wrap it up here, guys? Last chance for questions. Uh, we're going to do a show on Thursday, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, here's another one. Uh, what, do you, what have you heard about the theory that Deanna Parazzo is being buried because Marty turned out WWE deal? That is not true at all. Yeah, zero truth to that rumor. She's, yeah. she's on TV, like, what, like twice? Yeah, zero truth to that. There, there's other reasons why she's not getting the push right now, but that's not one of them. Because I asked about her, because she's been around for a while, and she definitely has 
something. Uh, but there's other reasons. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's it. Are we done? I think we're done. Rich, we've done a bunch of shows yes, this sir. week. We're going to be back on Thursday. We're working on something. Oh, here's another one. Brandon, uh, does anyone think Aleister Black will hit his head on the chandelier mm. as he rises on his entrance like a Dracula dead and loving? Like like in Dracula dead and loving it. There you go. Uh, I you got to be careful with that guy. With Aleister? Yeah, because if, yeah. If, if something like that happens and it's not edited or edited out, that's it. Right? Yeah. He's goofy now. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Enchante is a playable character right now in WrestleMania 2K20 in the community creations. You just got to search the ID official R-I-Z-K. So if you good. guys have 2K20, do this. Go and download that character and take a screenshot and send it to us and we'll retweet it. I want to make this a thing. Thank I want to make Enchante. By the way, he comes out to the Nikki Bella theme. Uh, so and he, he, it just the entrance is great. It's phenomenal. Everything about it is great. I want to see him I'm in very action. Excited about this. I want to see him in action. Uh, we'll see. That's it. All right, guys. That's right. it for this week. Uh, we'll see you all on Thursday. Second Matt Men of the week. You can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarin. You can follow Rich at BTC Rich, and of course Matt Men Podcast on Twitter. You can follow us there. Facebook everywhere. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. Audio, video, everything is available. And we'll see you all next time. Take care.